السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله يا على الصلاة يا على الصلاة يا على الفلا يا على الفلا الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهدي ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Indeed all praise and thanks is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And may the peace and blessings of Allah jalla wa ala be upon his final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah tabarak wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran in Surah At-Tawbah لَقَدَ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عزيز عليه ما عنتم حريص عليكم بالمؤمنين رؤوف الرحيم That I have certainly come to you a messenger from amongst your own selves That it is grievous to him عليه الصلاة والسلام Our dear Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم That any harm would come to you And that he is to the believers kind and merciful. This particular verse, which is in Surah At-Tawbah, the ninth chapter of the Quran, and Surah At-Tawbah represents some of the last revelation in the latter, latter part of the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's not early revelation. But this particular verse, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala informs us that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has a great care for his Ummah. And not only a great care, but also it causes him a distress that any harm that may come to the believers. So what did the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Salam, how did he react to his, with his companions? What did he teach his companions Alayhi Salatu Salam, to show concern for them? Moreover, what did the Prophet ﷺ do and say, not just concerning his own followers, but the followers that may come in the future? 
And there are, of course, a couple of occasions or a couple of narrations in which that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam speaks with reference to people who will believe in him but do not see him. And in an occasion when the Prophet والسلام, asked the companions about who that they would see as the most complete in Iman or who has the most amazing Iman and they replied that maybe it was the Malaika or the Prophets. But the Prophet والسلام, in the hadith itself some of the ulama have graded it Hassan. That the Prophet ﷺ said that who has the most amazing aman, iman is a people who believe in me and never saw me. So the concern of the Prophet ﷺ was for his own companions, the best of people. But the concern also was for those who came after. Now our love, tijah al-Nabi ﷺ, our love for the Prophet ﷺ is based upon what? On many, many things. But if you know and are aware of what the Prophet ﷺ said, warning his people, guiding his people to that what was the truth, clarifying falsehood and so on, and that this advice was there for us to follow. There are times, you know, in our lives where following that guidance we see what a great advice and how deep and real that concern was and how much love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had for his companions. So when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِيَّاكُمْ وَمُحْدَثَاتُ الْأُمُورِ That be aware of the newly invented matters. فَإِنَّ كُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ Because every newly invented Matter is an innovation and any, every innovation is a path to the hellfire. This one narration, which is, if you just contemplate its meaning, here the Prophet ﷺ is warning us about tampering with the religion. Tampering meaning that you're going to add things to it, that somehow you are going to beautify it even more. Or possibly that you will take things away because you don't think it's applicable or it applies anymore. That when Allah Tabarak Ta'ala revealed on Yawmu Arafah al Yawma Akmaltu Lakum Deenakum that today I have perfected or completed the religion for you. Complete in that Allah Tabarak Ta'ala informs us this religion is perfect. You don't need to add anything, you don't need to take anything away. But throughout time and in the environment that you may be living in, which becomes maybe detached or comes away from becoming a religious people. And there are many a place where people are becoming detached away from the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, number one. And people are moving towards atheism a life without a creator. And that if Muslims are living in such a society, are living in such an environment, no doubt they will be impacted by these, by these thoughts and by these, these ideologies. Not necessarily for a generation who maybe not, doesn't affect you, but the youth and the shabab who will have these doubts and have these things that are thrown at them in their schools and at different levels of education. So the Prophet ﷺ gave us everything that we need to protect ourselves from falling into, بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى from falling into dangerous matters that will take us away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the concern of the Prophet ﷺ for his ummah was something very real and something very practical. Things that maybe even the Muslim doesn't really think about too much. Something that is, you can ask and you practice yourself now. So you ask, what is the cause of the drought that this country is currently going through? Hose pipe bans and so on. Why is there a drought? Maybe you ask, the majority of the youth, 
The answer will be what? Global warming. We're going through this difficult time around the world. The world is heating up, so on and so forth. Why? Because of global warming. Because of our dealings with the environment. That's the first answer. From an Islamic perspective, how do we look at the situation? Do we reject science? As Muslims, we don't reject realities. But does the Muslim have a different perspective? Does Islam, did Allah ta'ala teach us something else? Did the Prophet Islam teach us something else? Were there droughts at the time of the Prophet Islam? Yes, there was. The people that came, the Sahaba radiallahu anhu, came to the Prophet Islam suffering from a drought, their crops being scorched. What was the first thing for us to do? The Prophet وسلم, raised his hands and made dua. Because who is the one who sends the rain? Who is the one who withholds the rain? It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That maybe because of droughts, maybe sabab al dhunub maybe the consequences of our sins. So the Muslim at all times, in all situations, Islam gives us guidance concerning that matter. And in such situations, because maybe the Muslim says that, you know, we're living amongst, you know, disbelievers. And they are living in sin. And this is maybe why, you know, this is our Islamic understanding. That, okay, yes, you may be living amongst non-Muslims and there's, you know, disbelief and ilhad and atheism is widespread and so But if you are living amongst that, you're living amidst that. Do you not fear for yourself from the consequences of that? So when situations like this occur, the Muslim looks within themselves and says, what is Islam? Or what guidance was given to us concerning these matters? Because maybe a person grows up and is nurtured in this manner that, you know, world events and world phenomena, phenomena that happens, there is no attachment to deen, what Islam says on that. Islam is something that you do in the masjid. Islam is that, you know, you pray at home. You know, we're talking about science and so on and so forth. There's no such thing as, you know, Islam giving us maybe guidance on that matter. Not necessarily the reason for it or clarification as to scientific issues. Because the Quran is a book of hidayah. But retrospectively within ourselves, we say, maybe it's because of our sins. Because of our behavior that we need to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ask for his forgiveness. That he will send down the rain to us. He will return our situation. Rectify our situation to be better. And this is how the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa when we look at it, the concern that was given to us for his nation and those nations that came after. And this is how that Islam is a way of life. It is a practical way of life. It is something that you can refer to in all situations in your life. And not for us just to relegate it to certain places and instances where it's on a Friday or it's in the masjid going to, you know, for dars and so on. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the truth and allow us to remain firm upon the aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum min kulli dhanf astaghfiru innahu huwal ghafurur rahim. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, wa ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi, wa ashabihi, ajmain, all praise belongs to Allah. And may the peace and blessings of Allah Jalla wa ala be upon his final messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In many places in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us of the blessing, the virtue, the mercy, the, the sending of our beloved Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for mankind. That there was a people at a time they were living in clear misguidance. And when Ja'far ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu stood in front of an Najashi, when that 15 or 16, 17 of those Muslims who made the first hijrah from Mecca to Habasha, and when the Quraysh sent emissaries to send them back, an Najashi gave the Muslims an opportunity to speak. Defend yourselves or what do you have to say or justify why you can stay here? And what was his statement? 
inna qawman ahl al-jahili. We were people who were of ignorance. We used to worship idols. We used to live in a society where where the strong person consumes their wealth and oppresses the weak and mention all the vices within the community until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to us a messenger who showed us what was the truth to give rights to neighbors to fulfill the rights of other people this is the mercy of the sending of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us and there are many places like this in the Quran لقد من الله على المؤمنين إذ بعث فيهم رسولا من أنفسهم. That Allah subhanahu wa taala did confer a great favor upon them, upon us, when He sent a messenger to them from amongst their own selves. يتلو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة. That He would recite to them His verses, purifying them and teaching them the book and wisdom. وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ And even though they had been in clear manifest error before. This is the mercy of following and understanding the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Allows us to purify our souls, purify our ibadah, and allow us to purify our communities in action. And the way that you go about doing that is to if you can physically change it, you change it. Or to speak against it, or at least in your heart. Not just to jump what is in your heart that, you know, I, I hate that for the sake of Allah, when you have the ability to speak against that. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen our iman, to stand for the truth. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and our shabab and our youngsters to remain firm upon the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا يا رب العالمين اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل وقم إلى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استو استقيموا straight in the lines fill the gaps الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله قثاء أحوى سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى ونيسرك لليسرى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصلى النار الكبرى 
ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله الله أكبر الله الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين والتين والزيتون وطول سينين وهذا البلد الأمين لقد خلقنا الإنسان في أحسن تقويم ثم رددناه أسفل سافلين إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات فلهم أجر غير ممنون فما يكذبك بعد بالدين أليس الله بأحكم الحاكمين الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته brothers and sisters Please donate generously towards the masjid on your way out. Buckets and contactless machines are situated at all exit points. 
Alhamdulillah for the land that we purchased, 56 Green Lane. We now only have 55,000 pounds left to raise. Uh, brothers and sisters, we encourage you, especially those of you that have wealth, have money, donate for the sake of Allah, help us to complete uh, 